Hello and welcome to The Hedonistic Way. I'm Renee Main and today I wanted to pop in and share with you some questions that I get asked really regularly about, about staying connected to a lover or a partner, particularly when one is committed to personal growth or spiritual growth and the other one isn't? Or how do you stay in a relationship when one person is spiritual and the other one isn't? So I really wanted to delve into this because it comes up a lot in in relationships and it's so nuanced that I think it really needs some airtime to to cover all of the all of the fears and why they come up and you know how we can really meet this in a really honoring way for all parties involved so it can be a really common understanding and even desire for if if you're on this path of growth and spirituality it, we want to share it with someone we want someone to you know particularly if we're in a relationship or if we're single and looking for a relationship we feel like we need to be on the same path we feel like we need to be on the same page and if I'm committed to my spiritual growth then how can we continue to be connected and you know still in love while holding completely different beliefs about and around spirituality so a common fear is growing apart and this is something that i have journeyed and a lot of people who come into my containers journey in question their relationship when they're on this they're really dedicated to this part this, this path of growth so I will speak from experience and also what I've seen happen um, when we start on this spiritual path we can really desire to have these conscious conversations and amazing conversations where we riff off of, you know, all these thoughts and ideas and what's alive in us. And it can feel really disheartening and disconnecting and deflating <laughs> if it falls upon deaf ears or with someone who it just goes over their head. And I really get that. And at times it can feel like you're growing apart and sometimes you do fall apart. But I want to offer a little, a little segue or a little path that I think is available to us as well. Because as I say, this is very nuanced. So will we grow apart if one is committed to growth and the other one isn't? Sometimes, yes, that, that's absolutely true. And I'm sure that there are many of you who have found that, that you have grown apart with partners or perhaps even your current partner where you are now completely misaligned and not connected and can't find that, that sweet spot whereby you can be you and, you know, they can be them and you still come together for intimacy and share that, you know, those, those feelings that we all love, right, that we all want to experience. Um, here's my, my thoughts on it. Is it a prerequisite? No. It's not. Sometimes, and this can be quite confronting, is because, you know, sometimes in the past, I know I've felt like it's like, I don't want my partner to hold me back. We need to, you know, we need to be just as hungry and just as dedicated to this path. However, what I came to realize was that was my own expectations. That was me projecting what I think he, in my case he should be doing 
right? So that's called, that's often our thoughts on you need to be here and you need to do this. And ultimately we're telling them what we think they need to do to make their lives better, right? And that's not our responsibility. That's not our job. And while if we're going, this is where you should be, this is what you need to be doing, and this is how you need to show up in life. And in order for you to show up, you need to believe this and you need to do this. And we subscribe to one narrative without actually opening ourselves up to going, hang on a minute, that is actually not my responsibility. It's not my responsibility to judge or assume what they need to be doing in their lives and what they need to believe. So often it can be our stuff. Um, and we're creating that, that pedestaling and we're putting ourselves on a pedestal thinking that because we are so spiritually aware and woke, then we know better. And that is not, that is not conducive to what really enlightenment is. And there's a humility that needs to come in whereby, you know, we can have mutually exclusive thoughts and ideas without seeing the other person as wrong or the enemy. And we can actually understand that everyone has their own path. Everyone has their own divine timing. And it is not up to us to, to think that we know better. Because ultimately what we're doing is we're just thinking that we know better than the universe, right? Um, they've chosen their path for a reason. And be, just because we are and we believe where we are, we're no further along the path. We're no better. We don't know any better. It's just different. So there's that. So what I would say to those of you who are feeling that is sit with yourself and Ask yourself, what are my expectations here of this person? And how is the opposite also true? Right? You know, what if, what if their way was perfect for them? What if their way was just as divine and just as spiritual as yours, but it just looked differently? Right. So, you know, asking yourself is what beliefs am I actually forcing and projecting on this person? And why am I thinking that, why am I wanting them to be someone different than they are? Right. Because ultimately that's what it is, is we want you to be different to fulfill my needs. Right. I need you in my life. And if you're in my life, you need to think like this. You need to think like I do in order for me to love you, in order for us to work and be in love. So you can see how, you know, there's, there's a real exchange there, right? There's a selling out, there's a selling of the soul, whereby it's based upon our expectations. And that's not conducive to a healthy relationship whatsoever. However, in saying that is sometimes when we are on this this spiritual growth or this evolution or personal development, whatever it looks like for you, is there can be growing apart, right? Because you realize that you go, this is not how I want to feel every day. This person doesn't bring out the best in me. This person doesn't make me feel the way I want to feel. And you can realize that, oh, actually, we're not aligned as what we think we are. My values have now changed. So what I will say is if your values are still aligned, then there's potential there for this to work, right? But if your values are completely different, then the chances are that you are going to grow apart so there's, you know, as you can see, it's, it's really nuanced here. So it's largely a values thing. Um, 
and it's a, it's an ongoing narrative and it's ongoing you know questioning that how am I showing up to this and why am I feeling this way and doing the work within ourselves to make sure that we are congruent with our own expectations and keeping our expectations in check, right? Regulating our own nervous systems and just being mindful of what we might or might not be projecting. So, so there's that. And will you grow apart? Like, you know, some people will, but that's inevitable. And that can happen whether one is dedicated to the, to the spiritual path or not. One thing that I will say is often, you know, we can think that the more alike we are, then the better that we're going to get along. And if you're a conscious person looking for a conscious partner, what we can end up finding, you know, a really like just, you know, a spiritual fuck boy. And and I don't mean that with any judgment, but we're wanting this version of ourselves. It's actually really not what lights us up. We think that we want it until we get it and we're going, oh, fuck, hang on a minute. This is not actually what we want, right? This person doesn't actually light me up. Doesn't like it doesn't turn me on, right? So I find that it can be more about us than them particularly if we're the ones on this spiritual path and this this spiritual growth and we're so dedicated to it and you know we know how good it feels we know it's so important to us and therefore because it is so important to us it's really easy for us to project that onto other people so you know we just need to check in check in right um there's also um there's a shadow element there that I think that, you know, we really need to speak to. And that is, and that is, we get sucked into, you know, we romance, you know, the, this version of what it is to be a conscious couple, right? We might have this, this couple, this conscious couple in mind, you know, whereby, you know, they, they're both dedicated into this conscious path, into this spiritual growth, into this whatever it is. However, it's not always as it seems, or it may be even better than what we think it is. And that's not up you know, that that's really kind of not, not important. But often what it is, is it's our own Mm, delusion and we're getting sucked into this this idea of ultimately you know it's very misogynistic it's very one-sided and you know so we're listening to to people about it should be like this and I'm never going to sacrifice because we need to be on the same path and we need to be on the same page and I need someone who can hold me and someone who can hold me has to be this person and again it's like this person has to be this 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 has this gigantic big checklist but that's not that's not realistic, right? Because even if we're both on this conscious path and we're a conscious couple, there's still gonna it's still gonna be hard. There's still gonna be shit that needs to come up. There's still gonna be, you know, there's still gonna be hard work involved. There's still gonna be dedication. There's still gonna be commitment. So you know, there's that. So I feel like it's, we need to just have an honest conversation about what is required in a healthy relationship, any relationship. So that brings me to the next point is what is in a healthy, a healthy relationship. And that for me, it's about openness. So it's not so much about us finding someone that has the exact same beliefs as us. It's about both parties being really open and letting each other go on whatever exploration we need, whatever exploration and inquiry is needed of us um, or called upon us, we feel called to embark upon in that time. So it's more about being open. And as I was saying a little bit earlier, is making sure that those fundamental values not, not necessarily the same, 
but the, there's definitely a strong interconnection between them. That is far more important because irregardless, the shit going to come up, right? You're going to get activated and you're going to be triggered. And, you know, sometimes I think that just being in a relationship is, you know, sometimes our, our biggest evolution, right? How can I stay true to me and be in my own sovereignty? And how can this person be in their true selves in their own sovereignty and we come together for an intimate exchange for a path where we journey through life together right so it's more about us being open then you know for me that's the success so i love you enough to go on whatever journey you need to go on. And I will support you. I will listen to you. I will hold you in that. And vice versa. Right? So we're not trying to alter any person. And there's a, still a genuine curiosity, but there's a mutual respect of. You are where you are on this path and I trust that, right? Because we trust divine timing. We trust the divine path and we have humility to know that my way is not the way. It's just right for me. So I'm going to let you be you, you do you and I'll do me. And then we will just come together in this sacred exchange. And when you come, when you realize this is you begin to open up your lens to go, oh, okay. And you begin to find new nuances and love and intricacies and all of these beautiful flavors that weren't there before because we don't have the expectations upon one another. So when we ditch the expectations, guess what? We can actually have better sex. We can have better conversations. We can have a genuine exchange because we're not thinking that our way is the better way. And that's not you know, that's not saying that, you know, that's still respecting that communication is really important. So still coming together and going, this is, I really need this and this is what I'm desiring from you, right? And not making it bad or wrong, but having an open dialogue and an open line of communication whereby you can really hear each other without thinking about your own needs. And then you can form one, you know, whatever form of agreements or plans or you know exchange or whatever that is in a way that works for both of you and not one of you so yeah that is that is my feelings around around relationships and love and spiritual growth you know it's a beautiful idea to go you know what I'll commit to I'll commit to me and you commit to yourself and we'll meet each other on whatever realm that is and you know that's not above or below it just it just is and you'll either meet each other there or you won't um but I hope this I hope this yeah I'd love to know how it lands where it lands what's alive in you and just have a journal um I think a big part of this is um ditching the expectations and our own beliefs and ideas around what we think that people, you know, where people should be. And sometimes I think that the most, you know, if we're on this path of spirituality and spiritual growth, then sometimes a normal person <laughs> can, can be really good for us and it can work if they're open. Right. And, um, I think that's the key here. And if those values are aligned, then that will either present itself or it won't. And you'll know exactly what to do from there. But knowing that you've you've actually had an honest inquiry about what it is that you need and you've had that self, self check about that, you know, about your own beliefs and expectations. So I will leave it there. Let me know how you think. And if you've got any thoughts or questions, just let me know. Have a good day, guys. Bye.